What's up, everyone? Welcome to the January 19th edition of FanDuel Tournament Plays presented by Prize Picks. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can find me on Twitter at ChipMyMoneyDFS. And as a reminder, you get one free month of Awesomeo Plus Platinum when you sign up and make a deposit at Prize Picks. Be sure to use the code Awesomeo to receive a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. We have a massive 13 game NBA slate today. There's going to be a lot of news that changes things throughout the day, but we also have plenty of information to work with right now. So, going to take an early look at five of the top tournament options but as always be sure to tune in to the deeper dive from five to six eastern and live before lock from six to seven for more up-to-date news but starting at number five taking a look at uh, five of the top early options on FanDuel Lamelo Ball only projected for three percent ownership with an 11% chance of being in the optimal lineup. He's only $8,200. Part of his low ownership projection probably has to do with Kelly Oubre being questionable tonight for Charlotte. If, if Oubre is back, it has a negative effect overall on the fantasy production of Charlotte's main players because with Oubre out, they've essentially just kicked that spot out of the rotation, not really replacing all of those minutes, and it's led to more playing time for everyone who's normally in the rotation. If Oubre comes back, it cuts minutes away, but you're still likely to get 32 or 33 minutes on average from ball, and he's averaged 1.33 FanDuel points per minute this season. The other reason that his ownership is low is that there's just some crazy pricing on point guards on FanDuel. Russell Westbrook in particular at 7,500 is someone that's likely to draw a lot of ownership, but uh, 3% ownership on someone as good as LaMelo at a very reasonable price tag is a bit too low. Number four, Scotty Barnes, $5,500, small forward, power forward eligible. He's averaged 0.93 FanDuel points per minute this season. He's projected for 10% ownership with a 12% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Barnes came back and played a ton of minutes last time out. Gary Trent is still questionable for Toronto. If he comes back, it's likely that you're getting like 35 or 36 minutes from Barnes instead of 40. Uh, if Trenton is out, we essentially saw a six and a half man rotation for Toronto last game, which led to about 40 minutes for Barnes. But one way or the other, you're talking about someone that averages nearly a fantasy point per minute and is likely to play at least into the mid 30s tonight at a $5,500 price tag. I'm not overly concerned that this is a slow paced, unappealing matchup. But uh, the price tag just makes Barnes look very good for me. Number three, John Collins, $7,400, only projected for 7% ownership with a 12% chance of being in the optimal lineup. He's power forward and center eligible. And one reason I like Collins is that Clint Capella is still out for the Hawks. Anekwa Okongwu has been confirmed as the starter. He started and played 36 minutes for Atlanta last game. But Collins is better without Capella on the floor. He's averaged 0.96 fantasy points per minute alongside Capella this year, 1.04 alongside Okongwu, and 1.12 overall when Capella's not on the floor. Collins is likely to be the backup center tonight, so if Okongwu plays 36 minutes, you're probably getting 12 minutes at center for Collins. If Okongwu plays 26, you're probably getting 22, uh, whatever 48 minus 26 is, for, for Collins. So he has the potential to do really, really well here, and the, the salary is reasonable to where, even at his average levels of production, he looks pretty good. Number two, Nikola Jokic, only projected for 12% ownership with a 15% chance of being in the optimal lineup. He's $11,500, center only. Um, he's averaged 1.71 FanDuel points per minute this season. At this point, I don't really think there's a whole lot extra to say about him. We know what he is. He's, he's the highest projected guy on pretty much any slate that he's on. He has a reasonably good matchup against the Clippers. The issue is that you can only roster one center, and so the opportunity cost is high, and you don't have much margin for error when you pay all the way up because there's plenty of high upside mid-range centers that can put up scores that don't necessarily get to Jokic's level but get close enough that you're better off spending up elsewhere. So that's the risk, but it's always pretty appealing when you can get the best point-per-minute fantasy producer in the NBA at about 12% ownership. And number one, coming in as the top tournament option tonight, LaMarcus Aldridge, $4,400 with power forward and center eligibility. He's projected for 20% ownership with a 26% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Now, one thing I do want to say is that the 26% chance of being in the optimal lineup is based on our current minutes projection of 27 or 28 minutes for Aldridge. I think that that projection is reasonable in that if he starts, I would expect him to play 28 to 30 minutes. And if he comes off the bench, he could still get there, but I don't think it would be as likely. I do think there's a chance, though, that between now and lock, 
that projection comes down. We got Daron Sharp starting the last game. You essentially got 48 minutes split between Sharp and Aldridge. But even if it comes down, there's a bit of wiggle room there for Aldridge to still project as being under-owned, especially because he has power forward eligibility. And he's averaged about 1.14 fantasy points per minute off the bench this season. So even if we find out that Aldridge is still coming off the bench, there's a good chance he's getting 20, around 24 minutes and still easily exceeding a $4,400 price tag. So to recap, the top five tournament options on FanDuel, Number five, LaMelo Ball. Number four, Scotty Barnes. Number three, John Collins. Number two, Nikola Jokic. And number one, LaMarcus Aldridge.